So now that we understand how chemical buffers and physiological buffers help maintain acid-base balance, let's look at some of the imbalances that we see with acid base. And so those would be acidosis versus alkalosis and how partial pressures of carbon dioxide and bicarbonate levels differentiate the four types of imbalances. And then what are the compensations to be able to correct any acid-base imbalance? So first, let's get some terminology down. We have acidemia is basically when your blood pH is below 7.35. Acidosis is the primary physiological process that tends to cause acidemia. Those terms can almost be used interchangeably. I won't get into the nitpicky detail when to use one versus the other, but be familiar with both. There are two types of acidosis, metabolic acidosis, such as from decreased perfusion, where you get lactic acid buildup or keto acids buildup. Those would be examples of metabolic acidosis. Respiratory acidosis can also happen. This would be from hypoventilating, that is lowering uh, respiratory rates so that CO2 builds up. Alkalemia is when blood pH is greater than 7.45. And so alkalosis would be the primary physiological process that tends to cause alkalemia. Again, don't get wrapped up about the details between those two, just that they both refer to blood pH is higher than 7.45. We have two types of alkalosis, metabolic alkalosis, which can happen from excessive diuretic therapy, or respiratory alkalosis, which can happen when you hyperventilate. Hyperventilation is clinically defined as breathing such that we decrease partial pressures of CO2 in our blood. So the primary acid-base disorders then is one of four uh, disturbances that are tied in with bicarbonate or partial pressures of carbon dioxide. So we have metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis respiratory acidosis or respiratory alkalosis. Now the compensations for that is gonna be changes then in bicarbonate or partial pressures to carbon dioxide. But we don't use those changes, those compensations that we see with uh, the kidney or respiratory system and talk about them as, a, as one of the primary acid-based disturbances. In other words, if I have metabolic alkalosis, I'm not going to say that I'm compensating by using respiratory acidosis. The terms are specifically just to describe the condition. The compensation will be more specific. So acidosis, again, is pH below 7.35 and alkalosis higher than 7.45. And to differentiate the four, then, we can look at pH partial pressure of CO2, and bicarbonates. So notice that if you're in acidosis, whether it's metabolic or respiratory, the pH, of course, is low. If it's respiratory acidosis, it's all about partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So we have too much carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide then forms carbonic acid, and hence acid. We have acidosis, or, it break, or you can think of the hydrogen ions. Um, that form from that carbonic acid dissociating. And the bicarbonate levels typically in respiratory acidosis are gonna be close to normal. For metabolic acidosis, it's not the CO2 concentrations. Now it's a decrease in bicarbonates. It could be lactic acid buildup, and those bicarbonates are all used up to neutralize that acid. So the bicarbonate buffers are gone. So we have a low bicarbonate levels. Respiratory alkalosis or metabolic alkalosis, of course, the pH is high in either one of those. For respiratory alkalosis, now it's too low a levels of CO2, and whereas bicarbonate levels are normal. Metabolic alkalosis, you'll see normal levels of CO2, partial pressure of CO2, but high levels of bicarbonates leading to alkalosis. Now to maintain acid-base balance, we have to either add bicarbonates or add CO2 or in effect add acid, the, bi the carbonic acid, to drive our equation one direction or the other. So you can imagine if I add bicarbonates, this side of the equation goes up, so the equation runs to the left, making more CO2. So effectively, I'm removing hydrogen ions and driving the equation to the left. Therefore, I have less hydrogen ions 
and my pH is going to go up. If I add carbon dioxides, I'm effectively increasing this side of the equation, the left side of the equation, making the equation run to the right. By making it run to the right, I'm adding more hydrogen ions, so therefore my pH is lower. You can think of this as kind of a balance beam effect or, or a teeter-totter. We have a, a 1 to 20 relationship between carbonic acid, basically CO2, or bicarbonates. Now, if I tip the scale either way, if I add carbonic acid or CO2 then, if I push down the scale, this, this um, meter is going to tip over to the left and I'm in acidosis. Okay, so if I push down on this side, this needle goes to the left. I'm now in acidosis. If my acidosis go, goes below 6.8, then I get nervous system depression that can lead to coma or death. If I have too much bicarbonate, that is effectively pushing down on this side of my teeter-totter, this needle is going to go over to the right, and so now I'm going to be in alkalosis. In alkalosis, if I go higher than 7.8, then I actually get nervous system overexcited. You get muscle tetany, extreme nervousness, nervousness uh, convulsions, and you die from lack of respiration because your muscles are all tightened up. So the important thing is to maintain this 1 to 20 relationship. We don't want to tip the balance either direction. So think of this, instead of looking at 1 to 20, we're just going to make the boxes represent this 1 to 20 relationship. And as long as the boxes are the same size, then we know we're in that proper relationship. And I don't, So I don't want to tip the scale either direction. So again, here's normal. I have this... 1 to 20 relationship, my box is the same size. Let's say I have an imbalance where I have too much CO2 or too much carbonic acid, so I'm tipped to this side, I'm actually in acidosis. So I need to compensate. Well, one way I can compensate is simply add more weight to this side of the balance. So in other words, you can see I added bicarbonates. So adding bicarbonates takes and balances the two out again, and I'm pH at normal. Or let's say, for example, I have too many bicarbonates tipping the scale over on this side, which makes it more basic. Now, I could add acid. That would be another possibility. But another one would be then if I have too many bicarbonates, let's get rid of them. Reduce the number of bicarbonates, and therefore we're back. The boxes are the same size, and everything's good. Another way to look at this acid-base balance is using this Henderson-Hasselbeck equation and that's written up here. Now some of this isn't really necessary um, but just so you know if you remember your chemistry that pK is the dissociation constant for this it's 6.1 and the normal ratio of bicarbonates to carbonic acid remember is 20 to 1 so if I substitute those values in I can calculate my pH at that 20 to 1 ratio which turns out to be 7.4. That is a normal pH. Remember, normal pH is 7.35 to 4.5, so I'm right smack dab in the middle. That's what I want to maintain. So now, we don't really need to deal with the constant. We don't need to think about 21 relationship. All we have to do is simplify it down to this relationship. So that pH is going to be related to carbonic, or excuse me, bicarbonate concentrations and partial pressures of CO2. So if I increase bicarbonate levels, that's going to then increase pH. If I decrease uh, bicarbonate levels, I decrease pH. Now, partial pressure CO2 is inversely related to pH. So if I increase CO2 partial pressures, then that increase in partial pressure is going to decrease pH. If I decrease partial pressures of CO2, that means I increase um, pH. And so I can look at it in this term to determine what do I need to do to compensate for changes in pH. And so that's where we're going to leave it for this one. And we'll move that next into the vid next video lecture, which is going to look specifically at the four types of acid-base imbalances.